Hello historians and welcome back. So today I'm going to talk to you about George Abbott. Now, George Abbott isn't actually as well known as what you would think he is. I mean, a lot of us in the local area, we just think George Abbott, okay, secondary school. But actually, no, George Abbott was more important than that. He was actually the Archbishop of Canterbury during the reign of James I. So today, let's explore the life of George Abbott. George Abbott was born on the 29th of October 1562 in the city of Guildford. Although, it's worth pointing out that Guildford would have been a town at this point as the cathedral would not have been built for another couple of centuries. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, George was the son of a cloth maker called Maurice Abbott and his wife Alice March. His parents were Protestants and they suffered persecution during the reign of Mary Tudor. George had at least five siblings, which included his youngest brother, Maurice, who would be knighted as Sir, become Governor of the East India Company and Lord Mayor of London, and his eldest brother, Robert Abbott, who would go on to become the Bishop of Salisbury. While pregnant with George, his mother Alice Abbott had a dream that if she could catch and eat a certain kind of fish, her child would grow to be a man of great prominence. On waking, Alice walked to the river Way that runs through Guildford and trapped a pike with her pail. She returned home and ate the fish. This story would become infamous throughout Guildford, and as a result, many people attended George's baptism, some of whom would then go on to help pay for George's education. George attended Guildford Grammar School after enrolling in the Beloit College, Oxford. He graduated with a BA on the 31st of May 1582, at the age of 19. Three years later, in 1585, he did an MA and continued to progress his education until 1597. In the same year, George was appointed Abbot Master of the University College. Early into his career, George would be mentored by his sponsor Thomas Sackville, who was the Chancellor of the University. With help from Sackville, George had also been appointed the Dean of Winchester and Vice-Chancellor of the University by 1600. In 1601, George and Richard Bancroft, the Bishop of London and eventually Archbishop of Canterbury, had a dispute over whether or not the ancient Cheapside Cross in London should be repaired or demolished. Bancroft wanted it to be repaired, while Abbott supported its demolition. Ultimately, George lost this argument and the cross remained. While at Oxford, George became a popular lecturer, writer and poet. He delivered a series of lectures at the University of Church of St Mary's on the prophet Jonah. In 1599, he published a work bearing the title A Brief History of the Whole World, dealing with a range of topics. It became a bestseller and it was regularly reprinted. 1603 was the year for change. George had rose to prominence under the reign of Queen Elizabeth I and had made a name for himself in this time. Queen Elizabeth died on the 24th of March 1603, with no heir of her body, and she made it known towards the end of her life that she wanted her cousin James, the King of Scots, to be her successor. Although it's actually debated how much she made that known, but that's what happened anyway. Times would be uncertain for George, as he would now have to navigate the politics of a new monarch and their reign. Fortunately, George was able to adapt to the change and in January 1604, George was invited to attend the Hampton Court Conference where King James I enthusiastically endorsed the suggestion of George's Oxford College, John Reynolds, that a new translation of the Bible be undertaken. By the end of June of that same year, George was to oversee the new translation of the Bible with Bancroft and was designated as one of the translators. His eventual role as Archbishop of Canterbury is evidence of how highly King James I regarded him and the effort he put forth in the translation of the Bible. George Abbott is the only translator to have a statue erected in his honour 
and it stands near the city centre in his hometown of Guildford in Surrey. George's star only seemed to rise. In 1609, he was made Bishop of Coventry and Lichfield, and Bishop of London in 1610, when his friend and fellow translator, Thomas Ravi, died. Later that same year, on the 2nd of November, Archbishop Bancroft died at Lambeth Palace. Bancroft had held Abbott in such high regard that he recommended Abbott as his successor as Archbishop. King James agreed that Abbott should fill the position that had been left by Bancroft, despite having other candidates who were more experienced and more qualified. On the 9th of April 1611, as the Bible to which he had given so much of his time was being readied for publication, George Abbott was consecrated Archbishop of Canterbury. George Abbott had been raised as a Protestant, and one of his more significant accomplishments as Archbishop was to establish a magnificent library at Lambeth Palace. Although generally on good terms with King James I, their relationship was not without its difficulties, as they did not always agree on views or actions. However, he did personally minister to members of the royal family in times of sickness, bereavement and celebration. In 1614, George established a hospital slash almshouse for the poor in Guildford, which is still in operation today. On Tuesday the 24th of July 1621, while hunting with his crossbow at Lord Zouche's estate Bramhill House in Hampshire, George Abbott shot an arrow which accidentally struck and killed the gamekeeper Peter Hawkins. George was understandably devastated at what had just happened and he never fully recovered from his grief. Thereafter, he undertook the support of Hawkins' widow and fasted one Tuesday every month for the rest of his life as penance. However, some of his rivals did not think his penance was enough and sought to remove him from office and wanted persecution. A commission of inquiry made up of prominent members of the clergy and lawyers was convened to examine the evidence. The clergy, who were investigating him, were generally hostile to Abbott and his case, and he would have been convicted had it not been for the support of one of the commission members, Lancelot Andrews, who had worked with Abbott on translating the Bible. In 1625, King James I died and saw the ascension of King Charles I. This change in monarchs saw another decline in Abbott's power and influence. Despite deteriorating health and suffering with severe gout, George did assist Charles's coronation. The new king embraced the hardline religious orthodoxy of William Loud, Bishop of London. Loud and his faction would use his position and influence with the king to increasingly isolate George to the extent that George practically got banished to his estate in Kent. This, however, did not stop him from trying to assert himself and exercised the powers of his office as limited as they were. George Abbott never married, and he died in Croydon on the 4th of August 1633 from natural causes, at the age of 70. Buried in the Holy Trinity Church in Guildford, across the street from the hospital he founded, and which continues to operate today. In the church, an elaborate monument marks his grave, Though he was described as having a gruff and even gloomy exterior, John Aubrey, one of his biographers, reported, Everyone who knew him loved him. I hope you enjoyed this little biography on George Abbott and found it interesting. If you did, please support me the best way that you can, whether it's subscribing, liking, commenting whether you knew about George Abbott or whether he was just the name of a secondary school to you. And I really do hope to see you again in another video. But until then, have a wonderful day.